What's up, everybody? So, I uh, am back for a little bit, for a minute. Uh, I mean, I'm back. How's everybody doing? Uh, so today, well, actually... Welcome to the Tune to No Avail Astronomy Podcast, where we delve into the mysteries of the infinite cosmos. I'm your host, Joey. To no avail, shabby. And joining me on this celestial journey is my trusted companion, Lincoln the Dagonaut. Together we'll explore the wonders of the universe, covering fascinating science facts, while occasionally delving into our intriguing conspiracy theories. But fear not. Our focus remains grounded in the realm of science knowledge. So, buckle up and get ready to embark on an astronomical adventure like no other. Welcome to the Snow Avail Vale Astronomy Podcast featuring the Infinite Cosmos. Today, we are going to be going over what is light speed? What is, uh, what is light and how fast does light go? Are we in a, in a simulation that only tells? In the universe under a construction? Well, we're going to find out, guys. How you doing? Man, I miss you guys. It's been awesome. Uh, I don't know. I miss you guys. Uh, I haven't done a show in a minute. I had some things that I needed to take care of. But, hey, that's just life, you know what I mean? Uh, but, I don't know, man. Today's going to be a good show. Uh, I want everybody to go and, you know... It's going to be a fun show. I I really am liking it. So, you might ask yourself, what is the speed of light? What is, what is it, what's the speed of light? You know, what is it that, that we are governed under in the universe, you know, that the universe keeps us, you know, governed under? Well, the speed of light traveling through a vacuum I mean, it is exactly 299,000, I mean, million, 792,458 meters. That is 983,571,056 feet per second. That's about 186,282 miles per second. The universal constant known as equations as C, or light speed. According to the physicist Albert Einstein, uh, well, Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity, on which much of modern physics is based. I mean, you know, that, that really is the captivation of of the of of of, of uh, the re- you know everything's in relativity. Yeah, I mean, you know. uh, but nothing in the universe can travel faster than the speed of light, as we all know. The theory states that a matter approaches the speed of light. Theory states that a matter approaches the speed of light, the matter's mass becomes infinite. That means the speed of light function. Let me turn this down. I apologize. Uh, um, that means the speed of light functions as a speed limit on the whole universe. Now, the speed of light is is so immutable that according to the U.S. National Institute of Standard and Technology, it is used to define international standard measurements like the meter, and by uh, extension, the mile, and the foot, and the inch. Through some crafty equations, though, it also helps to find the kilogram and the temperature unit Kelvin. Now, Kelvin is something we're going to be talking about a lot. There's uh, so much to uh, light and, and all this shit that goes with it. Stuff. I am, I, I don't like to cuss on here. I'm, I'm, I like to use, uh, not, not, you know, refrain from not bad language. But despite, and I want, and I want to take callers. Please take, I want to take callers. Uh, I, give me a minute. I won't be able to look because I'm going through my notes and stuff. But despite the speed of light's reputation as a universal constant, Scientists and science fiction writers alike spend time con- contemplating faster 
than, than, than speed travel. Um, you know, it's, uh, um, I don't know. It's, well, I'll tell you this once. I'll tell you this now. Um, we're gonna be, I mean, uh, it's gonna, uh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, thank you back there. Yes. I know. I know. Okay. I know, man. It's been so long since I've done a show. Thank you. Thank you. I take the vow. I do. I do. Um, so, uh, but despite, but despite the speed of light's reputation as a universal constant, scientists and science fiction writers alike spend time contemplating faster than light travel. So far, well, yeah, so far no one's, no one's been able to demonstrate a real warp drive, but that hasn't slowed our collective hurdle toward new uh, stories, new interventions, and new realms of physics. Now we're going to get into what a light year is. A light year is the distance that, that light can travel in one year. About 6 trillion miles, 10 trillion kilometers. It's one way that astronomers and physicists measure yeah, events. Okay. And give me cigarettes. Immense distances. Your lunch is almost ready. Okay. Immense distances. Oh, wait, wait. What? Milk. What? Milk. What? Milk. Milk. I need milk. Is it good? Uh, I think. To obtain an idea of the... Wait. Okay. Light travels from the moon to our eyes in about one second, which means the moon is about one light light second away. Sunlight takes about eight minutes to reach our eyes, so the sun is about eight light minutes away. Light from Alpha Centauri, which is the nearest star system to our own, uh, it requires roughly about four to three years to get there. Get here. So Alpha Centauri is 4.3 light years away. To obtain an idea of the size of a light year, take the circumference of the Earth, 24,900 miles, lay it out in a straight line, multiply the length of the line by 7.5. Now, the corresponding distance is one light second. And this is something you, yeah, listen, so check this out. Then place 31.6 million similar line to end to end. NASA's Glenn Research Center says on its website the resulting distance is almost six trillion miles stars and other objects beyond our solar system lie anywhere from a few light years to a few billion light years away everything astronomers see in the distant universe is literally history when astronomers study objects that are far away they are seeing light that shows the objects as they existed in the in that time that the light left them. The principle allows astronomers to see the universe as it looked after the Big Bang, but which took place about 13.8 billion years ago. Now, objects that are 10 billion light years away from us appear to astronomers as they looked 2 billion years ago. Relatively soon after the beginning of the universe, rather than how they appear today. Uh, why the universe is all history, uh, that's a whole nother, uh, subject I can get into, if you would like. Now, let's see. Why the universe is all history. It took 300 years of experiment and calculation to pin down the speed at which light travels in a vacuum. An, unimp an impressive 186,282 miles per second. Light will travel light, slight, slower uh, than, than this through air. And some wild experiments have actually slowed light to a crawl and seemingly made it go, back, go backward. But at the scales encountered in the everyday lives, light is so fast that we perceive our surroundings in the real time. Look up at the night sky 
and this illusion begins to falter. Because light takes time to get here from there, the further away there is a further in the past light left there, and so, well, basically we see all at, at some sometime in the past. Now explains Floyd Secker of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center of Greenbelt, Maryland. Now a light year, uh, in light years, wait, uh, we see the relatively close moon as it was 1.2 seconds ago, and the more distant sun as it was eight, about eight minutes ago. Now see, I got that. Now, okay. Now, out of sight, some galaxies are so remote that they that, that their light hasn't had sufficient time to reach us yet, despite about 13.7 billion years ago. Now, I need to take a small... No, I don't. No, I'm sorry. I don't need to take a small break. Ooh. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Good break. Yeah. All right. What's up, guys? Let's see. Is this uh been? Is this show been shitty? Here, is anyone on here? the rest of this so I don't have to like throw it away or put it back in. I don't, I took two of your naproxiums for my back. Nick B, what's up? What? I took two of those for my back. Drink Nick all B, that. I don't need it. Thank you. Uh, Nick B, what's up, Sue? Uh, how's it going? Yeah, I'll give all right, so. Actually, you know who's going to get it? Harry. Harry. Harry, here. Here, here. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, ow. Harry, get some shit. You have a lighter, sweetie? My 
beloved. Now, Speed of Light fact answered by an expert. We asked Rob Zellin, <coughs> exoplanet hunter and staff scientist as NASA Jet Propulsion Lab, a, 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 a few frequent, que frequently asked questions about the speed of light. I know that me, when me and Lincoln were cruising around, man, that we had a, you know, we came up with some uh, things that were, you know, crazy for, uh, for what we had to deal with and, and stuff like that, you know? So... Let's see if I can get this to work last time. Anyway. Light can fire. travel in one year about six trillion miles. That's supposed to be the most important thing. You are. Mm -hmm. Okay. About thirty seconds. About six trillion miles, ten trillion uh, kilometers. It's one way that astronomers and physicists measure immense distances across our universe. Light travels from the moon to our eyes in about one second, which means the shoulders? moon is about uh, one, one light second away. Sunlight has taken about eight minutes to reach our eyes, so the sun is about eight you know, light minutes away. Hey, maybe I'm in my lighter. Um, uh, so, sun is about eight, eight light minutes away. Light from Alpha Centauri, which... Is the nearest star system on our own? Please hit like on the show if you like it. Uh, helps the channel a lot, and I'm trying to get where I want to do this as my job, and I need uh, I need your help. I need your guys' help for this. Um, share my channel, all that stuff or whatever. Uh, I uh, yeah, I got some cool stuff coming up too. You know, I've been saying that for a while, but uh, which is the nearest star? Uh, Alpha Centauri, which is the nearest star system to our own, requires. Uh, roughly 4.3 years to get here. Going, you know, in light year. Alpha Centauri is 4.3 light years away. To obtain an idea of the size of light year, take the circumference of the Earth, 24,900 miles, lay it out in a straight line. Multiply the length of the line by 7.5, the co corresponding distance in one light second. Then place 31.6 million similar lines in, uh, in end to end. NASA's Glenn Research Center says uh, on the website, the resulting distance in almost 6 trillion miles. Stars and other objects beyond our... Hang on, sorry. There you go. Okay, thank you. Let's get up here with me. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, come on, Link. Get up here. Link, get up. You got about 10 minutes to talk to me, David. Okay. Okay. Uh. Stars and other objects beyond our solar system light anywhere from a light from a few light years to a few billion light years away. And everything astronomers see in the distant universe in, is literally history. When astronomers study, no, when astronomers study objects that are far away, they are seeing light. And they, is this someone? 
Oh, hang on, I'm gonna fast. I need to check something. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? I hope. Stars and other objects beyond the solar system lie anywhere from a light year, few light years, I'm sorry, a few light years to a few billion light years away. And everything astronomers see in the distant uh, universe is literally a history. When astronomers study objects that, that are far away, uh, they are seeing light. They are seeing light that shows the object as the, as they existed at the time of the light left. The principle allows astronomers to see the universe and as it looked. Sorry. Yeah, as it appears today. No. I don't want it. These cookies are good. To be the life facts answered by what? Uh, well, an expert. Okay. We asked Rob Zellin, exoplanet hunter, the staff scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, a few frequent uh, questions about the speed of light. Now, Dr. Rob Zellin, can everybody hear me? Okay. Radio Parles, what's up? How you doing, man? Man, how's it going? Thank you, man, for the like in the show. God, you're awesome, man. It's good running into you. You've been doing okay? All right. Now, Dr. Rob Zellum is a staff scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a federally funded research institute, nope, research and development center operated by the California Institute of Technology. Rob is, a, is the project lead, lead for Exoplanet Watch, a citizen science project to observe exoplanets, planets outside of our solar system with small telescopes. He is also the science co co calibration lead for the, for the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope's cor cornograph instrument, which will directly image exoplanets. What is the fastest, uh, what is faster than speed of light? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Light is a universal sp a speed limit. And according to Einstein's theory of relativity, this is the fastest speed in the universe. 300,000 kilometers per second, 186,000 miles per second. Is the speed of light constant? The speed of light is a universal constant in a vacuum. Light like uh, the vacuum of space. However, light can slow down slightly when it passes through an absorbing medium. Uh, like water, 225,000 kilometers per second equals 140,000 miles per second. Or glass, 200,000 kilometers per second, 124,000 miles per second. Who discovered the speed of light? Hey, here you go. One of the first measurements of the speed of light was by Romer in 1676 by observing the moon of jupiter that's cool that is really really cool that uh, jupiter did a lot for us man um um yes i'm sorry uh was first measured by high precision in 1878 yeah 1879 by the michelson morley experiment how do we know the speed of light 
Bremer was able to measure the speed of light by observing eclipses of Jupiter's moons Io. When Jupiter was closer to Earth, Romer noted that eclipses of Io occurred slightly earlier uh, than when Jupiter was farthest away. Come on, Lincoln. Bentley. Let's go. Uh, Romer uh, attributed uh, this effect to the time it takes for light to travel over the longest distance when Jupiter was farther from this Earth. How do we learn the speed of light? Aristotle, nah, well, no, we'll get it. As early as the 5th century, Greek philosophers like Empedocles and Aristotle disagreed on the nature of light speed. Empedocles uh, proposed that light, whatever it was made of, must travel and therefore must have a rate of travel. Aristotle wrote a rebuttal of of Empedocles' view in his own treasure on sense and the sense of light. Arguing that light, unlike sound and smell, must be instantaneous, Aristotle was wrong, and of course, but it would take hundreds of years for anyone to prove it. See, light can be light can be uh, measured in two ways. It can be measured in waves, and it can be me- measured in particles. Uh, and we will get to that. Uh, I'm actually wish I had my other notes for. I've got real cool notes with uh, with with uh, real cool things on, on on light from one of my favorite astronomers, uh, Richard Pogue. If you don't know who he is, get on here and look up uh, Astronomy 161 and, and Astronomy 162. Richard Pogue is my hero. I mean. He's my god. The dude is just amazing. Anyway, in the night in 1670s, Danish astronomer Ole Romer tried to create a reliable timetable for sailors at sea, and according to NASA, accidentally came up with a new best estimate for the speed of light. To create an astronomical clock, he recorded the precise timing of the eclipse of Jupiter's moon Io from Earth. Over time, Romer observed that Io's eclipses often differed from his calculations. He noticed that the eclipses uh, appeared to lag the most when Jupiter and Earth were moving away from one another, showed up ahead of time when the planets were approaching and occurred on schedule when the planets were at their, at their closest or farthest points. The observation demonstrated what we today know as the Doppler effect. Which the Doppler effect is like, uh, you get it in weather, the Doppler effect. So, as it's moving away, the, the waves go, they get longer. And they get, and so that, that, that's the red shift. And if they're real close and bunched, that means they're blue. And so you can tell blue's coming towards you, red is going away, and they're a lot, you know. Um, uh, which I'll explain here. He noticed that the ellipses appeared to lag the most when Jupiter and Earth were moving away. Wait a minute. What the hell? What just happened? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. My notes get don't go. And Earth were moving away when it showed up ahead and plane is approaching occurred. A scheduled plane. Okay. The observation demonstrated what we know today is the Doppler effect. The change in frequency of light or sound emitted by a moving object that in the astronomical world manifests as the so-called red shift. The red shift towards redder, longer wavelengths in objects spe- speeding away from us. In a leap of in- intuition, Romer determined that light was taking measurable time to travel from Io to Earth. Romer was, the, was, was his observations to estimate the speed of light. Now, since the size of the solar system and Earth's orbit wasn't yet uh, accurately known, so, I mean, that was play a part, argued in 1998 paper in the American Journal of Physics. He was, hang on, he was a bit off. But at last, scientists had a number of, to work with. Romer's calculation put the speed of light of about 124,000 miles per second, 200,000 kilometers per second. So, uh oh. In nineteen twenty eight. Uh oh.
shit. This is gonna be a long, this is gonna be a really long, uh, yeah. Alright, now let me get to this. Now, Einstein's theory of special relativity, Ted Bertelvian, a, a unified energy matter, and the speed of light in a, in a famous equation E, MC equals square. The equation describes the relationship between mass and energy. Small amounts of mass, M, contain or are made of an inherently en enormous amount of energy, E. That's what makes nuclear bombs so powerful. They're converting mass into blasts of energy. Because energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared, the speed of light serves as a com conversion factor, explaining exactly how much energy must be within matter. And because the speed of light is, is such a, a, a huge number, even small amounts of mass must equate to vast quantities of energy. And that is, my friend, the secret of all. Whoa, 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 whoa. As me and Lincoln dive more into, you know, when we met Einstein, uh, he kind of had it going, and man, he, he, you know, we saw where he was going with it. In order to accurately describe the universe, Einstein's elegant equation requires the speed of light to be an immutable constant. Einstein's asserted that light moved through a vacuum, not, oh, not, any kind of, of luminiferous ether, ether, but and in such a way that it moved at the same speed no matter what the speed of the observer. Think of it like this. Observes, observers sitting on a train could look at a train moving basically along a parallel track and think it's relative m movement to themselves as zero. But observers moving nearly the speed of light would still perceive light as moving away from them at more than 670 million miles per hour. That's because moving really, really fast is one of the only confirmed methods of time travel. Time actually slows down for the observers, who will age slower and perceive fewer moments than an observer moving slowly. In other words, Einstein proposed that the speed of light doesn't vary with the time or place that you measure it, or how fast you yourself are moving. Therefore, ob objects with mass cannot ever reach the speed of light. If an object ever did uh, ever did reach the speed of light, its mass would become infinite, and as a result, the energy required to move the object would also become infinite and impossibly an impossibility. That means if we base our understanding of physics on special relativity, which most modern physics do, really, honestly, you know, you know uh, the speed of light is an immutable speed uh, limit of our universe, the fastest that anything can travel. What goes faster than the speed of light? Although the speed of light is often referred to as the universe's speed limit, the universe actually expands even faster. The universe expands at a little at a little more than 42 miles 68 kilometers per second for each megaparsec of distance from the observer wrote astrophysicist Paul Sutter in the previous article for space.com a megaparsec is 3.26 million light years a really long way so in other words a galaxy one part a megaparsec appears a, a, a megaparsec away appears to be traveling away from the Milky Way at a speed of 42 miles per second or 68 kilometers a second while a galaxy 2 megaparsecs away recedes at nearly 86 miles per second 136 kilometers a second and so on so it's a big math thing huh? yeah you can uh at some point, at some uh, obs ob obscene distance, the speed tips over the scales and exceeds the, s the speed of light, all from the natural uh, regular expansion of space. S Sutter explained, it seems like it should be illegal, doesn't it? 
realistic, is it? No. But it sure does seem like it should be. I mean, I don't know. The physics, physics, the physics of, of, of the speed of light, it, it, it blows my mind. Is everybody still there? Is this, is this boring or is this too much or anything? Uh, uh, did you guys miss me? I haven't been around for a while. I miss you guys, man. I, I love my, I love my poppy family. Yes, the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. Yes. Come on, Lincoln. Let's go. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, let me know. Hey, what's up, Car- Carter? What's up, Text1025? I'm glad that you guys are on here. It was, makes me happy that everybody is, is on here. Uh, listen, I, I didn't know if people were really but anyway, at some point okay so although the speed of light is off wait where was I special relativity provides an absolute speed limit the universe according okay a galaxy on the far side of the universe that's the domain of general relativity and general relativity says who cares that galaxy can have any speed at once as long as it stays away far away and not up next to your face, Sutter wrote. Special relativity also doesn't care about the speed, uh, superluminal or otherwise, uh, of a distant galaxy, and neither should you. What? Can you have a cigarette? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Take okay. No, I just don't like the taste of that. Now, does light ever slow down? Now, light can bend around any um, object in space. It will go around it. And what is called micro lensing. It's called micro lensing. Now, micro lensing is a. Um, it, it, it's, it's light, and you know how space is a it's fabric. The bending of light. Well, it's a, it goes around the fabric of space. So it sits there, it bends around. That's where gravity, that's where your orbit, the orbit goes around it. But it bends around that space so that you see the light of the light of the star. It's pretty cool. I don't have a light. You uh-uh. Like a vacuum, it's generally held to travel at an absolute speed. But light traveling through any material can be slowed down. The amount that a material slows down light is called its refractive index. Light bends when coming into contact with particles, which results in a decrease in speed. For example, light traveling through Earth's atmosphere moves almost as fast as light in a vacuum. I'm bringing it back to you. Wait, I need it. Uh, <laughs> for example, light traveling through Earth's atmosphere moves, moves almost as fast as light in a vacuum, slowing down by just three ten thousandths of the speed of light. But light passes through a diamond slows to less than half its typical speed, PBS Nova reported. Even so, it travels through the gym uh, over 277 million miles per hour, almost 124,000 kilometers a second, enough to make a difference, but still incredibly fast. Light can be trapped and even stopped inside ultra clouds, cold clouds of atoms, according to 2001 study published in the journal Nature. Most recently, a 2018 study published in the journal Physical review letters propose a new way to stop light in the tracks at exception, uh, exceptional points or places where two separate light emissions intersect and merge into one. Oh, and please share my live show if you can. Uh, man, that helps. And I uh, always like to get, you know, I, I was doing this every day. I would like to. Would you guys like me to do it every day again? Or do you want me to do like Tuesdays and Thursdays? Uh, I really want to hear it from you guys so I can get a good base of what my, I don't know if you guys, I, I consider you guys my fans, but 
Uh, I really, this is your channel as well, and I want to hear what you guys think about what I should do. I like doing it every day, but Tuesdays and Thursdays, if that works, you know, better. Uh, let me know. I can do two hour, two two hour, uh, shows on Tuesday and two two hour shows on Thursday. Or, like I said, I could do every day. Uh, so researchers have always tried to slow down light, even when it's traveling through a team Scottish successfully slow down a single photon or particle light of light even as it moves through a vacuum as described in their published in the journal science in their measurements the difference between the slowed photon and a regular photon was just a few millionths of a meter but a demonstration but if that light in a vacuum can be slower than the official speed of light. Hmm. Okay, can we travel fast through the light? Star Trek's warp drive. Are we there yet? Um, whoa, is this not? Uh oh. Now, see, you know, like sound, uh, you need a something to carry, you know, sound, but light. Uh, oh, you're cool. Half hour, three quarter hour, pod three times a week. Really? Okay, you think that would be cool, better? Yes, do you want me to do... I'll, um, yeah, I can explain about antimatter. Do you want me to do it right now, or do you want me to do a show on it? Uh, I think you honestly want to know what I think about antimatter. I think it is the opposite of gravity. We're diving when we delve into a different dimension, and then because gravity pushes up together, antimatter. I think it's pushing us apart. Do you want me to do a show on it now, or do you want me to do a show on it in my next show? Up to you. Now, one cool thing about about uh, about. Uh, Hang on, let me see some copy. Let me go over here to the Facebook. Let me share my live video. So maybe I can post public. All right. No. Okay. Now, where am I? Everybody's still there? Um, I just, man, I wish I could. I wish I could quit my day job and do this. I would love it so much, but I don't know. I guess I, I need more fans, I guess. Uh, you, would you guys like shirts? I want to make some shirts and stuff like that real bad, too. Um, so let me see if I can put my other notes. Uh, light. I'm probably going to be doing a thing on light for, for a little couple days because there's so much to it. Oh, I was just talking. Uh, yeah. uh, there's, one, uh, there's one right there, and then there's this one. I'll look at the I gotta find my this notebook, one of my notes. Yeah. What? <laughs> um, let's see. Where am I at? time. They give me two hours, so let me see how much. Oh, I'm only at 45 minutes. Okay. Are you guys still there? I haven't bored you yet or anything? No, I'm not. Uh. Leak it! Leak it! Let's go! Okay. Now, I'm going to go over some things in my notes about light that's pretty cool. Okay. Now. Now, let's see. All right. Now, light is uh, an electromagnetic radiation. Uh, 
It can be waves or it can be photons or protons. It can be uh, in particles or it can be, um, and it's the electromagnetic spectrum. The, the Doppler effect causing slight shift between blue and red. Uh, like an example, if you go out to the corner and you hear an emergency vehicle coming, and you'll hear woo and woo, and then when it leaves, when it goes by, then it's like woo. You know, you hear you hear the up and down. So the general properties of light. Now defined as a wave, uh, light is both photon and wave. Uh, is a quantum. In the 18th and 19th century, a lot of people locked at light, locked in light in waves any periodically disturbance and, and repeating property of a medium like like sound waves uh, you're hearing compression waves you are what you're in, in sound you're hearing the compression waves in the air that go to your ears and and wiggle the vibrations into your ears waves carry energy like light, light waves are different they travel uh, through a vacuum and light does not need a material or a substance uh, like water waves uh, need water seismic waves need a uh, rock but light is a different because it doesn't need a material or substance to be carried by because it because it waves in on itself uh, it's uh, it, it doesn't need material things to carry it now with light, of course, you have different colors in light. Uh, light travels independently of energy. Uh, and see, the fastest thing in the universe, light is the, is the fastest thing in the universe. Light, it bends the universe, or binds the universe together. Waves have three properties. Speed of propagation, using space between waves. Long waves are slow. Short, short are fast. Speed of light never changes, independent of frequency of the wavelength. Electro and magnetic both, light carries photons. Uh, energy of photons carrying light do, uh, do not have, or do have high frequency or low energy photons. Electromagnetic spectrum, that is something that's important that you want to remember. Secrets from lowest to highest. Low radio waves, um, and high uh, a are uh, and highs are like AM radio uses of low uh, photon, um, high energy rapid isolations, small ultraviolet uh, waves, X rays and stuff like that are high energies. So the middle visible light, we're gonna do this chart. The middle visible light would be the high would be gamma rays, X rays. Now, uh, the middle would be visual, like what we see, and that's the smallest part, uh, measured in hundreds of billions. Now, the low would be infrared, radar, ra uh, radar, uh, microwaves, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and, and microwaves infrared is blocked by molecules. So, radio visible spectrum is really tiny. Now, uh, now how bright, how many photons uh, depending on it's how you get the brightness is how many photons total output apparent brightness. Now, output power units per second is like uh, gives way to what's called the Doppler effect. Effective light is apparent shift of the observed light source moving toward or away from you. In sound, if you stand on a on a street corner, emergency vehicles come flying by. The up and down noise as it approaches and moves away from you. That is because light can be measured in waves uh, and works for light. And in the same way it works for sound, it works for light. Uh, light can measure speed and direction. Uh, high pitch, high frequency, low pitch, low frequency. As it moves toward you, wave gets bunched up. As it moves away, wavelengths get longer. Redshift. So the bunched up ones would be the blue and the red shift. And that's why when you hear red shift about, about, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, oh, galaxies that are hundreds of thousands of light, you know, they say 
they're moving away and they go to that red ship because they're moving further. So the wavelengths are longer. And as it moves toward wavelengths, they get shorter, so they're blue. That's how you, if you, remember, you know, that's how you can remember. Now light carries energy. 300 come to, and then, and then you go into the Kelvin. And Kelvin is like 300 Kelvin is comfortable. Uh, pure water freezes at 273.15. Water freezes at, 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 uh, 273.15 Kelvin. And 373 Kelvin is your boiling point. Um, now spectrum is the distribution of, of photon energies, uh, coming from a light source or how many photons are emitting from a particular light source. Now, peak of spec, hotter is bluer and cooler is redder. By looking at a hot uh, solid object like a planet or a star, by looking at the distribution of color and light, like the spectrum can, can, sit, can read its total power and its temperature, can look at the spectrum of light and can measure the temperature anywhere in the universe if they are emitting a black body like spectrum. The human body emits a hundred watts of energy in the infrared. And why does each uh, chemical element have its own unique spectrum line signature? Well, every atom, ion, etc., has its own unique spectral line. So it's, uh, that's just some of the sky notes that I got. Uh, and this subject can go on and on. Am I boring you guys? Is any of this Hey, what's up, Candy? What's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, antimatter. Let's get into some antimatter stuff. Hang on. Now, they don't really know what antimatter is, but uh, let's get into some of this. Uh, I got some notes right here, just so just so happens. Uh, but no, they don't really know what antimatter is, and antimatter is uh. Boy, antimatter is something else. <laughs> See, okay. In modern, no, not to be confused with negative mass or dark matter for uses, antimatter. In modern physics, antimatter is defined as matter composed of the antiparticles or partners of the corresponding particles in ordinary matter and can be thought of a matter with reverse charge, parity, and time known as CPT reversal. Antimatter occurs in natural processes like cosmic ray collisions and some types of radioactive decay. But only a tiny fraction of these uh, have successfully been bound together in experiments to form an uh, anti-atoms. Now, it depends, you know, minuscule numbers of, an in of antiparticles can be generated, you know, somewhat at particle accelerators. Uh, you know, like, um, that, the one in France. Lincoln! Oh, there you are. Um, antimatter occurs in natural processes like cosmic rays, but only a few fractions of these six successful have been bound together in experiments to form anti-atoms. Uh, minuscule numbers of antiparticles can be generated at particle accelerators. However, total artificial production has been only a few, uh, nanograms. So, no uh, macroscopic amount of antimatter has ever been assembled due to the extreme cost and, and difficulty of, uh, of uh, production and handling. Nonetheless, antimatter is an essential component of widely available uh, applications related to beta decay, such as uh, pos positron emissions, uh, Tomography, radiation uh, therapy, and industrial. Come on, Lincoln. Come on. Let's go. Uh, and, and industrial imaging. Now, in theory, a particle and antiparticle, for example, a proton uh, and an antiproton have the same mass. So, uh, well, but opposite electric charge and other differences in quantum of numbers. A collision between any particle and its antiparticle partner leads to their mutual annihilation. So basically, 
they can make negative energy, but as soon as it hits oxygen, it turns positive, X itself out, and bam, that's it. Which is why they are so confused about about our uh, our universe, because everything that's put in the universe, uh, there's always going to be something that will exit out. So if you have a positive, the negative is going to X that out. But somehow, something in our universe, we don't know what, something uh, got to where uh, matter overtook antimatter. And that's what all this in front of us, trees and all this stuff, uh, it, it overtook it by just a milligram. And that's why we have what we have this universe today. Now, um, a collision between the particles and an antiparticle partner leads to a mutual annihilation, giving rise to various proportions of intense photons, gamma rays, neutrons, and sometimes less massive particle, antiparticle pairs. Hang on real quick. Is this answering any of your, any of your, I mean, what you wanted me to, to do or... Uh, or is this, uh, well, let me know if it is, uh, minuscule numbers of, of antiparticles can be generated by particle accelerator. Oh, wait. Okay. In theory, a particle and an antiparticle, for example, a proton and an antiproton have the same mass, but opposite electric charge and other differences in quantum numbers. A collision between any particles and its antiparticle partner leads to their mutual annihilation, giving rise to various proportions of intense photons or gamma rays, uh, neutrinos, and sometimes less massive particle and, and to antiparticle pairs. The majority of the total energy of annihilation emerges in the form of ionizing radiation. If surrounding matter is present, the energy content of this radiation will be absorbed and, and converted into other forms of energy, such as heat or light. The amount of energy released is usually proportional to the total mass of the collided matter and antimatter, in accordance with the notable mass energy equivalence equation E equals mc squared. Antiparticles bind with each other to form antimatter just as ordinary part, uh, particle bind to form a normal matter. For example, a positron, the an, an antiparticle of the electron, and the antiproton, the antiparticle an, an of the proton, can form an antihydrogen bomb atom. The nuclei of anti-helium anti have been artificially produced. Albeit, albeit with uh, difficulty and are the most complex anti-nuclei so far observed. Physical principles indicate that complex antimatter atomic nuclei are possible, as well as anti-atoms corresponding to the known chemical elements. There is strong evidence that the observable universe is composed almost entirely of ordinary matter, as opposed to an equal uh, mixed mixture of matter and antimatter. This uh, symmetry of matter and antimatter is a visible universe and is one of the great unsolved problems in physics, the process of which is, uh, is inequality between matter and antimatter particles developed uh, um, is, is called baryogenesis. Now, the definitions. Antimatter particles carry the same charge as matter particles, but of opposite sign. This is the antiproton is negatively charged and an, an, an anti-electron positron is positively charged. Now, neutrons do not carry a net charge, but their consistent quarks do. Protons and neutrons have a baryon number of plus one. While antiprotons and antitondrious tontrions uh, have a baryon number of one, negative one. Similarly, electrons have a, a lepton number of one, plus one, while that of positrons uh, is a negative one. 
when a particle and is corresponding the anticipated um, collide, they are both converted into energy. A French or the French term contraterrain led by the initialism CT and the science fiction term SETI is used as such novels as SETI ship. The conceptual history, the idea of negative matter appears in, in past theories and matter. Hang on, I'm sorry. Is this what you kind of, is this, give, an idea, am I doing okay with this? Do you want me to keep reading or? Thank you guys for hitting like and everything. Is that kind of, is that kind of talking about? I got more to read if you want me to. I'll just keep going. Uh, I got a lot of stuff that, I, mean, I know a lot about this, but, uh, uh, my notes that I've had from the other, from a couple weeks ago. Now, uh, between the 1880s and the 1890s, Carl Pearson proposed the existence of squirts, square, squirts, <laughs> the sinks of the flow of, of ether, ether. The squirts uh, represented normal matter and the sinks represented negative matter. Pearson's theory required a fourth dimension for the ether of, to follow or to flow uh, from and into. The term antimatter was first used by Arthur Shuster in rather two uh, whimsical Letters in Nature in 1898, in which he coined the terms. He hypothesized anti atoms as well as whole antimatter solar systems and discussed the possibility of matter and antimatter annihilating each other. Shesser's ideas were not of serious theoretical proposal, merely speculation, and, like the previous ideas, differed from the modern uh, concept of antimatter in that it possesses the negative in, uh, uh, gravity. The modern theory of, of antimatter began in 1928 with a paper by Paul Dirac. Dirac realized, realized that, the, that the relativistic version of Schrodinger wave equation from electrons predicted by possibilities of anti-electrons, although Dirac had laid the groundwork for the existence of these anti-electrons. He initially failed to pick up on the implications contained within his own equation. He freely gave the credit from or for the insight of J. Robert Oppenheimer. Uh, whose seminar paper on the theory of electrons and protons, uh, February 14, 1930, drew on Dirac's equation and argued uh, for the existence of a positively charged... Come on, Megan. Let's go. Uh, positively charged electron. A positron, which is the uh, counterpart of the electron, should have the same... Come on, Megan. Now, the modern theory of antimatter began in 1928. Yeah, I got that. He initially failed to pick up on the implications contained within his own equation. He freely gave his credit inside of J. Robert Oppenheimer, whose seminal paper on the theory of electron protons drew on, on Dirac's equation argued for the existence of positively charged electron and positron, which, as a counterpart to the electron, should have the same mass as the electron itself. This meant that it could not be, as Dirac uh, had fact and suggested, a proton. Dirac further 
postulated the existence of antimatter in a 1931 paper. Although Dirac did not himself use the term antimatter, it used as follows and naturally enough for the anti electrons, uh, anti protons, etc. A complete periodic table of antimatter was, in, was in, envisaged by Charles Janet in 1929. So that's a little bit. I could go on more properties. Theorize anti gravitational properties of antimatter are currently being tested at the AEGI's Alpha experiments at CERN. Research is needed to study the possible gravitational effects between matter and antimatter. <laughs> and between antimatter and antimatter, however, antimatter and antimatter, however, research is difficult considered when the two meet the, anni the annihilate. Uh, they annihilate, along with the current difficulties of capturing and containing antimatter. There are compelling theoretical re reasons. Hang on. Your phone is going to die in a minute. Then I'm going to save that. Oh. Okay, let me do this. Let me get this. Let me get this. Let me get this. Let me get this. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, this means a particle and its corresponding antiparticle anti must have identical masses and decay lifetime, if unstable. Oh, shit. Um, it also implies that, wait, for, for example, a star made up of antimatter, an anti-star, will shine just like an ordinary star. This idea was tested experimentally in 2016 by the Alpha Experiment, which measured the transition between the two lowest energy states of anti-hydrogen. The results, are, which are I, I, identical to that of hydrogen, confirm the, re, the val, validity of quantum mechanics for antimatter. On 27 September 2023, physicists reported studies which reported the notion that antimatter particles behave in a similar way as normal matter in gravitational fields. That's pretty cool. Uh, are you guys bored or anything yet? Let me keep uh, going or? Just making sure that we're on the same page. Now, origin and asymmetry. Most matter observable from the Earth seems to be made of matter rather than antimatter. If antimatter dominated regions of space existed, the gamma rays producing the annihilation reactions along the boundary between matter and antimatter regions would be detectable. Antiparticles are created everywhere in the universe where high energy particles collisions take place. High energy cosmic rays striking Earth's atmosphere or any matter of the solar system produce minute quality quantities of antiparticles in the resulting particle jets which are immediately annihilated by contact with nearby matter. They may similarly be produced in regions like the center of the Milky Way and other galaxies, where very energetic celestial events occur, principally, uh, princip uh, principally the interaction of re relativ relativistic jets with the interstellar medium. The presence of the resulting antimatter is detectable by the two gamma rays produced by every time positrons annihilation with the manta nearby antimatter. The frequency and wavelength of the gamma rays indicate that each carries 511 keV of energy. That is the rest mass of an electron multiplied by C2. Now, Obser observations by the European Space Agency uh, in, 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 in integral integral in, integral oh God satellite may explain the origin of a giant antimatter cloud surrounding the galactic center. The observations show that the cloud is asymmetrical 
and matches the pattern of X-ray binaries. Binary stars, systems containing black holes are, or neutron stars, most on, on one side of the galactic center. While the mechanism is not fully understood, it is likely to involve the production of the electron. Positron pairs as a ordinary matter gains kinetic energy while falling into a stellar remnant. Antimatter may exist in relatively large amounts uh, in wait, God, my eyes uh, in faraway galaxies due to cosmic inflation in the in the primordial time of the universe. Antimatter galaxies, if they exist are expected to have the same chemistry and absorption of emission spectra as normal matter galaxies and their uh, astronomical objects would be observationally identical, making them difficult to distinguish. NASA is trying to determine if such galaxies exist by looking for X-ray and gamma ray signatures of annihilation events and colliding spectra, uh, superclusters. In October 2017, scientists working on the base experiment of CERN reported a measurement of the antiproton magnetic moment in a met in a precision of 1.5 parts per, uh, parts per billion. Uh, it is consistent with the most precise measurement of the of the proton magnetic moment. Also made by BASE in 2014, which supports the hypothesis of CPT, symmetry, and more. This measurement represents the first time that a property of, 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 of God, wait, yeah, first time the property of antimony is known more precisely than the equivalent property of matter. Antimatter quant, uh, quant, quantum inner Interferometry has been first demonstrated in 2018 in the Positron Laboratory uh, of Raphael Farragut in, in Como, Italy, by a group led by Marco Giamacci. Now, natural production. Positrons are produced naturally in B, the case of naturally occurring radioactive isotopes, for example, potassium-40, and in interactions of gamma quanta emitted by the radioactive nuclei. Each matter, uh, and tunia tunitrinos, are another kind of antiparticle created by natural radioactive uh, many different kinds of antiparticles are also produced by and contained in cosmic rays. In January 2011, research by the American Astro- Astronomical Society discovered antimatter positrons or originating above thunderstorm clouds. Positrons are produced in terrestrial gamma rays. Mm. You guys let me still go on or you guys still hit like on my thing? You guys good? Can you hear me? Right on. Alright, man. I'm sorry, I knew you were on. Oh, you're good. Alright, man. Well thank you. I appreciate it, Radio Parlays. Thank you for hitting like and Yeah, definitely, man. I'll be doing more shows. So yeah, I might do another one tonight. Uh, but awesome. Is everybody else still there? Or? Ah, I'll go ahead and keep going. Uh, well, hey man, it's good to see you, radio. Have a good one. So, antiparticles are also produced in any environment with a sufficient high temperature, mean particle energy greater than the pair production threshold. It is hypo- uh, hypothesized that during the period of baryogenesis, when the universe has, was extremely hot and dense, Matter and antimatter were continually produced 
uh, and annihilate it. The presence of remaining matter, the absence of detectable uh, remaining antimatter, is called baryon asymmetry. The uh, the exact mechanism is that produced by the asymmetry of, of the, 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 during baryogenesis uh, remains uh, an unsolved problem. One of the necessary conditions for the asymmetry of uh, the violation PC uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Recent observations indicate black holes and neutron stars produce vast amounts of positron electron plasma via the jets. Observation in cosmic rays. Satellite experiments have been found evidence of positrons and few. Well, all right. Uh, man, yeah. So, preliminary results of the presently open and operating alpha magnetic spectrosphere. Wait. For instance, electron positron pairs may be formed in pulsars as a, magne- as a magnetized neutron star rotation cycle shears electron positron pairs from the star's surface. Therein, the antimatter forms a wind that crashes upon the ejecta of the progenitor progenitor supernova. Supernovae. This weathering takes place in the cold, magnetized, uh, relativistic uh, wind launched by the star, hits the uh, non-relativically expanding ejecta. A shock wave system forms in the impact. The outer one pro- propagates in the in the ejecta, while a reverse shock propagates back toward the star. The former eje- ejection, um, yeah, but I don't know. Do you, uh, anyway, the former ejection of matter in the outer shock wave and the latter production of the antimatter in the reverse shock wave are steps in space weather cycle. Preliminary results from the presently operating Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer on board the International Space Station show the the positrons in the cosmic ray arrive with no directionally and no and with uh, oh man uh, energies sorry that range from GeV 10 GeV to 250 GeV. In September 2014, new results with almost no Uh, so weapons. Antimatter has been considered as a trigger mechanism for nuclear weapons. A, m- a major obstacle is the difficulty of producing antimatter in large enough quantities, and there is no evidence that it will ever be feasible. Nonetheless, the U.S. Air Force funded studies of the physics of antimatter in the Cold War and began considering its possible use in weapons, just not just as a trigger, but as the explorative explorative itself. Now, I don't, you know, now the medical uh, matter, antimatter reactions have practical applications in medical imaging, such as positron or positron emissions tomography. In positive beta decay, a nucleide uh, loses surprise positive charge by emitting a positron. In the same event, a proton becomes a neutron and a neutron is also emitted. Nucleides are with 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 my bed. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, become neutrons, and the neutrino is also emitted. Nucle nucleides uh, with with surplus positive charge are easily made in a cyclotron, and are widely generated for medical use. Antiprotons. Have also been shown with laboratory within laboratory experiments to have the potential um, to wait uh, yeah treat certain cancers and similar methods currently used to join ion 
uh, proton therapy. That's cool. Now, fuel. Isolated and stored antimatter could be used as a fuel for interplanetary or interstellar travel. As part of an antimatter catalyzed nuclear pulse uh, propulsion or another antimatter rocket. Since the energy density of antimatter is higher than that of the conventional fuels, an antimatter fueled spacecraft would have a higher thrust to weight ratio. Thus, uh, than a conventional spacecraft. If matter, antimatter collisions, uh, resulted only in photon emissions, the entire rest mass of the particles would seriously be converted into kinetic energy. There's just nothing, okay. Uh, okay. If matter, what? Uh, if matter antimatter collision results in only in photon emissions, the entire rest mass of the particles would be converted to kinetic energy. The energy per unit mass is about 10 orders of magnitude greater than, hi baby, I love you, love you. I'm dying, chemical energy, I'm almost done, but about three orders of magnitude greater than the nuclear potential energy that can be liberated today using nuclear fusion, about 200 MeV per vision fission reaction or 8 by 10 13 j slash kg and about two orders of magnitude greater than the best possible results uh, expected from fusion about 6.3 times 10 to the 14th power jkg from the proton uh, chain the reaction of a one kilogram antimatter and, and one kilogram of matter would produce 1.8 to the 10th, 17th power, 180 uh, p p of kind of a cigarette of energy. Uh, it's really it's good here. Of, 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 wait, where was I? Of kinetic energy. No, wait, I gotta find it. Oh, shit. Go back to where you remember. Ask somebody. Well, Is there anybody on? Yeah, a lot. Then the reaction of one kilogram off. of antimatter and one kilogram matter would produce 1.8 times 10 to the 17th power, 180 petajoules and I have boobs of energy really by the mass energy mm -hmm. equivalence formula, <laughs> E equals mc square, or the rough equivalent of 43 megatons of TNT, slightly less than the field of the 27,000 kilogram SAR bomba, uh, the largest thermonuclear weapon ever detonated. Not all <coughs> not all that energy can be utilized by any realistic propulsion technology because of the nature of the annihilation product. I think my cookies yesterday were better. While what? I think my cookies yesterday were better. I want a, I want a cigarette. Okay. Ah. Uh, uh oh. While electron positron reaction results in gamma ray photons, these are difficult to direct and use for thrust. In reactions between protons and antiprotons, their energy is converted largely into relativistic neutral and charged peons. The neutral peons decay almost immediately with a lifetime of 85 attoseconds into high energy photons. But the charged peons decay more slowly with a lifetime of 26 nanoseconds and can be deflected mag magnetically, magnet magnetically to produce thrust. Charged peons ultimately decay in a combination of neutrinos carrying about 22% of the energy of the charged peons and unsustainable charged uh, muons. Carrying about 78% of the charged peon energy 
with the muons and decaying of combination of electrons, positrons, and neutrinos. Um, the neutrinos from these decay carry about two-thirds of the energy of the muons. muons. Meaning that from the original charge uh, peons, that the total fraction of the energy converted to neutrinos may be route of another would be about 0.22 plus 23. So that's cool. So anyway, so that's my show. Uh, how's everybody doing? You guys still there? My wife's sick, probably dying. I'm gonna spend time with her. Uh, I'm just kidding. You guys still around or anybody there? Should I? Should I should I just take my break? All right, so I'm going to go through microlensing, the definition, uh, how it works. Now, you ask, what is microlensing? Microlensing is a method of issuing small loans called microloans to small... Wait. Oh, my God, that's not... No. Like, is it on your side? I don't know. That's why you put it where people can find it. I don't have a phone that does look that way. Okay. I guess I'll sit in here and play with my phone. That's all there is. All right, microlensing 101. Gravitational lensing is an observational effect that occurs because the presence of mass warps the fabric of space-time, sort of like the dent a bowling ball makes when when the set of a on a trampoline. The effect is extreme around very massive objects like black holes, entire galaxies, and you know even the big big stars. Uh, but even stars and planets cause a detectable degree of warping, called microlensing. Here's how it works. Light travels in a straight line, but if space-time is bent, which happens near something massive like a star or, or a, a universe, I mean a, a, a galaxy, a universe, a galaxy, uh, shit, um, um, okay, wait. Uh, like, okay, yeah, and it follows the curve. Any two stars align closely from our vantage point, light from the more distant star curves as it travels through the warp of uh, space-time around. I hope you guys can hear me. I really do hope you can hear me. Okay, uh, if the alignment is especially close, the near star acts like a natural cosmic lens, magnifying light. 
Wait, light follows the curve. Anytime two stars are, are closely from our vantage point, light from the more distant curves that travels through the warp space time around the nearest star. If the alignment is especially close, the nearest star acts like a natural cosmic lens magnifying light from the background star. Planets uh, orbiting the lens star that, pr that can produce a similar effect on smaller scale. Now, the familiar and exotic worlds, the techniques commonly used in to find other worlds are biased toward planets um, that tend to be very different from those in their solar system. Now, there's a couple different methods. The transit method, for example, is the best at finding sub-Neptune-like planets that have orbits much smaller than Mercury's. For a solar system like our own, transit studies could miss every planet. Now, Ro Roman's Galactic Bulge Time Domain Survey will help us find analogs to every planet in our solar system except Mercury. Uh, whose small orbit and low mass combined and, beyond, uh, and put it beyond the mission's reach. Roman will find planets uh, that are the mass of Earth and even smaller, perhaps um, even large moons like Jupiter, Moon, and, and Ganymede. So, uh, so, well, Roman will find planets basically in other poorly studied categories too. Um, he'll use microlensing and uh, finding it's the best suitable to find worlds from the habitable zone in their star and farther out. Now, this includes ice giants like Uranus and Neptune in our solar system, because uh, Uranus is definitely going to be at your mom's house. So while icy giants are our minority in our solar system, your mom's house gets to be in 2016 study. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm being sarcastic. Uh Indicated, thank you, indicated that they may be the most common kind of planet throughout the galaxy. Roman will put the, put that move, Billy, Billy coming out. Uh, theory to the not. test and help us get a better understanding um, of which planetary characteristics are most prevalent. From brown dwarfs to black holes, Roman will, ch will reveal more than just exoplanets. It will also pinpoint hundreds of other bizarre and interesting cosmic objects. Scientists will be the, able to study free-floating bodies with masses ranging from the uh, from that of Mars to 100 times uh, the Sun. Now, the low end of the mass range includes planets that were ejected from their host stars and now roam the galaxy solo as rogue planets. Next are brown dwarfs, uh, well, which are too massive to be characterized as planets, but not quite massive enough to power themselves by fusion like stars do. Um, they think that uh, Jupiter was a brown dwarf. It was uh, made to start being a star, but it didn't make it. Brown dwarfs don't shine visibly like stars, but Roman, they're real hot, though. Uh, but Roman will be able to study them in infrared light through the heat left over from their own information. Objects at the higher end of this uh, include stellar orbs, neutron stars, and black holes left behind when massive stars exhaust their fuel. Astronomers think that there should be about 100 million stellar mass black holes in our galaxy. But we've never uh, unambig un unambig unambiguously found one of its own s since they're since they're invisible. Since Roman survey relies on an object mass uh, for dedicate for detection, the mission will help us find them even when there's nothing nearby and the tip is off uh, for their preference. Um, so yeah, I mean that's pretty cool too. So, guys, I think that's, uh, I'm going to get to the, I'm going to wrap up my, uh, this, this show, unless you guys want to hear more. I got an hour and a half. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely, you guys, I'm back. I'm going to be doing another show tonight, about six o'clock. Join me tonight, and, uh, it's going to be a fun show. I might do it from my computer, so it's going to be cool. But, uh, you guys join me, and thank you for joining. Um, you guys are awesome, and I'm. Um, thank you for uh, the for and having me back. You guys have a good day, have a good night, uh, or afternoon until I wish our disease luck. Until I talk to you again.
All right, guys. Thanks a lot for this episode. It was fun. You guys are great. Uh, you guys are super great. Um, so join me tonight. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm going to get a hold of some of my other Podbeater friends and uh, have them join. I'll invite them. Uh, everybody else, don't miss it. It's going to be fun. You guys have a good day, and I will talk to you then. Bye.